And last but not least, we have from the Department of Epidemiology, Nagar Omid, who's going to speak about interdisciplinary learning from the start, how our education system needs to adapt. We are divided. It's easy to see evidence of political tension everywhere. Even young millennials, some who can't even vote, now feel compelled to stay informed on global issues, to get more involved politically, and to really make their opinions known. But regardless of which side of this almost literal wall we stand on, we tend to only unite with those who share our interests, ultimately furthering our divide. And so there has never been a more relevant time to talk about bridging divides, particularly in essential fields such as healthcare. The key to advancing the state of health across the nation is interdisciplinary learning that begins early, occurs often, and that really prepares students for entering the workforce. Very early in our professional careers, we realize that a large part of our job is effectively communicating our ideas and teachings to people across disciplines. This is especially true in my own field of occupational health, where so much of what I do involves understanding the needs of individual workers industry officials, and public policy makers, because I want, to advocate to the, I want to advocate for the employee without compromising the efficiency or economic output of the organization. However, educating students on the values of interdisciplinary learning and providing opportunities for students to collaborate across departments needs to occur in the earliest moments of our college experience, when we are first being introduced to the inherent complexities of these global challenges that we will be facing. So what does a curriculum that encourages cross-departmental collaborations look like? The good news is it looks a lot like what we're doing right now, and with just a few minor changes, we could really reinvent the education system. Imagine if interdisciplinary journal clubs and seminars, which are now being offered more than ever before, had a different professor teach each class based on that day's theme in that professor's area of expertise. What if fieldwork and global internships, which are so critical for combining theory to practice, were required of all undergraduate students? Imagine if your college class took a field trip. I know it sounds unconventional, unconventional, but there's still so much learning that can be done outside of traditional classrooms. Ideally, undergraduate programs would do all of this and more. They would be largely made up of courses that were specifically designed so that students of different backgrounds could come together and explore global questions in an interactive way rather than through textbooks. When students of different backgrounds work together in small group settings, they can experience firsthand how their specific area of expertise fits within the larger context. We begin to understand that we are all just separate, equally important and necessary pieces of the same puzzle. But why stop at the classroom? Imagine the structure of our campus was completely redesigned so we were constantly interacting with students from other fields. What if we had shared workspaces across campus that motivated students to engage with their peers in both academic and non-academic ways, preferably with free hot coffee? <laughs> I envision us creating more undergraduate competitions, much like this one, that encourage students to really step outside of their academic comfort zones and to think about knowledge translation creatively. These changes could initiate a lifelong desire for students to apply their knowledge in unique and non-traditional ways, both in and out of the classroom. As we all know, currently there is a fundamental divide in healthcare, and within our nation, people are undecided about whether access to preventable medicine, life-saving treatments, and routine vaccinations should be accessible to all. So how can we effectively communicate our ideas for advancing population health to people who may not hold the same priority and belief systems that we do? Of course, this is a much bigger topic than I can cover, let alone in five minutes, but I do really believe it centers around the interdisciplinary learning we do in school and beyond. The learning that helps us create action plans to motivate people to work because they meet the needs of all stakeholders, not just those in healthcare. The learning that erases the inherent power beliefs of traditional hierarchical models or relationships such as those among medical professionals. 
the learning that advocates for equal opportunity and fairness across all divides so that structural differences are removed and people of all backgrounds can feel valued. In short, the learning that unites to conclude, I would like to thank Molina Healthcare and the Breslau Fellowship for being great leaders and providing this unique opportunity for interdisciplinary learning.